What is an acting callback audition? How do you prepare for one? What can you expect on the day of? And when do you find out whether you got the part? These are all great questions. Welcome to part one of a two-part series on callback auditions. Let's go. Hi, I'm Vinnie Horst, and this is The Starting Actor. On this channel, I focus on topics that you'll encounter in the audition room, on set, and in the field. Real-world topics that you may not learn in a classroom setting. By their nature, some of my videos will, of course, touch on acting technique. But if you're serious about learning how to act, then I encourage you to seek out formal and professional training. In the meantime, sit back, relax, and don't forget to like this video to subscribe and click the little bell so that you get notified when new episodes are launched. In this episode, the first part in a two-part series, we'll go through seven steps that you can take prior to a callback audition to prepare yourself for the big day. In part two, we'll go through another 10 steps, starting from the day of, including what to expect during the audition, some curveballs that you can prepare for, and some post-audition tips. If you're following along and did the math, you counted 17 steps, but don't panic. You don't need to complete all 17 steps for every audition. Some steps are absolutely required, and I'll call those out, but others won't apply. Some are for advanced auditioners, and let's face it, the reality is that you won't have time to do all of them all the time. My personal goal is to complete most of the steps for most auditions, but I don't lose sleep if I miss some, so you shouldn't either. So, with that, let's go. Let's get started by defining the term. A callback audition is any audition that occurs after the first one. A callback audition, or callback simply for short, is granted by a casting director, or CD, for short, because they liked what you did in the first one and they want to see more of it. Most film, TV, and theater projects have at least one callback and sometimes more. Getting called back doesn't guarantee you the part, it just means that you're still in the running for the part. In small projects, projects that have quick turnaround, or when the casting director finds the perfect actor right out of the gate, then callbacks may not even be held at all. In terms of timing, however, if you do make it through the first auditions, then you'll hear back from the casting director within a few days uh, to a couple of weeks after the auditions are completed. Later in this episode, I'll talk more about this, so stick around for that. From a casting director's perspective, callback auditions are used to continue the interviewing process, to find actors for the roles in their project. Now, as an actor, I tend to focus on only my own callback, but in fact, Casting directors hold callbacks for all of the actors in the project, and as we'll see in a moment, that fact can affect how the callback process itself is structured. At the highest level, callbacks follow the same general framework as first auditions. The actors are invited to perform, the casting director judges whether the actor is a fit for that part, and either the role is cast or another set of callbacks are held. Now, one difference between first and callback auditions is the length of time that you could spend at a callback. As you probably know, first auditions, they tend to be really quick. Once you arrive on site or at the meeting, you wait in a holding area for a while. Then they call you into the audition room, you go through the scene once, maybe twice with the reader, and you're done. You put yourself back into the car and you head home. For online first auditions, the only thing that changes is there's no driving involved, and instead of sitting in a holding area, you sit in an online breakout room. All in all, the time that you spend at the audition location is usually less than 30 minutes, and the time in front of the casting director can be a few seconds, maybe up to a few minutes. Callbacks, on the other hand, are usually structured differently, which can lead to a longer audition time. In a first audition, the casting director is trying to quickly interview as many prospective actors as they can, knowing that they're going to invite back the actors that they like. So, you're in and you're out. At callbacks, however, only the best actors are there and the casting director has more time to spend with each of them. Also, instead of performing the scene with a reader, you are usually performing with an actor being called back for the other character in the scene. 
And depending on the casting director's style, you may also be asked to run the scene several times with different actors as they figure out which actors have the best chemistry together. As the callback process goes along, you might go back and forth between the holding area and the audition room a few times. As you can imagine, all of this takes a while and all in all, you might spend 30 to 60 minutes at an audition and sometimes half or more of that time is actually meeting with the casting director. In an extreme example, using one of my own, I was at a callback for over two and a half hours. Frankly, at the end of it, I felt like my time was being wasted, being called into the audition room over and over again. I chalked that experience up to an inexperienced casting director, not recognizing that they were monopolizing a bunch of actors' times. And sadly, in the end, I didn't land that part. Now, if at the end of the callback, the casting team has found the perfect actors for the parts, then casting is complete. If not, then they'll hold another callback. Larger Hollywood-sized projects can have two or three callbacks. In other words, the actors meet with the casting directors as many as four times, sometimes even more. The wait time to find out if you got the part or made it to the next phase varies, but generally it's between a few days to a couple of weeks. One of the variables that I've noticed that affects when I hear back is the production start date. If the filming is to start next week, then I can expect to hear back quickly. But if it's next month, then I might be waiting for quite a while. More on this again later. Okay, so now that we know what a callback is and how they're conducted, let's get into the mechanics of how to prepare for one. But first, I do want to point something out. Because if you got to the callback, then you are one of the very few actors that did. And it's worth remembering that. For a student project, you probably beat out a handful of actors. For a short film, a dozen or more actors. And for professional projects, there might have been hundreds of other actors. So take a moment and congratulate yourself and be proud. But now, the real work begins. The first step in preparing for an audition is not about preparation at all. It's about avoiding wasting your time. Whether you're a working actor with a busy schedule, a student with exams coming up, or, like me, a working stiff with a day job, before accepting the callback audition, log in to the casting website again, pull up the breakdown, and make sure that you're actually still available on the filming dates. I've never been burned by it personally, but I have witnessed other actors who have prepped for a callback, drove an hour to get there, waited in line for their audition, only to realize after the fact that they weren't actually available. So do yourself a favor and double check before you commit. If it turns out that you can't make it or maybe you changed your mind, then just be courteous and send an email or click the button in the casting website to decline the invitation. When I decline an audition, and regardless of my actual reason for declining, I like to simply say that I'm no longer available on the production dates and I wish them luck with the project. I do that so that I don't inadvertently say something stupid and burn a bridge. Next, make sure that you have the latest audition sides. The sides are the script that you're auditioning with. Sides are constantly being revised by the production staff, so check the casting website or with your agent, if you have one, to make sure that you have the latest version and prepare against that one. You can throw away all your old versions of the sides because you won't need them anymore. If you're like me and you print your sides to paper, remember to transcribe any notes that you wrote on the original sides into a notebook or onto the new sides. When you arrive at an in-person audition, it's also a good idea to check out for the paper copies of the sides to make sure that they match what you prepped with. Now, to determine the version of the sides, look for a date, a version number, five, six, seven, etc., or a revision color. Revision colors like blue, pink, and goldenrod are standardized sets of colors that are recommended by and used by the Writers Guild of America, or WGA. By taking time to make sure that you have the latest sides, you can avoid an awkward moment when you and the other reader are staring at each other, waiting for the other to say the first line in the scene. It can happen, believe me. Next. Find as much info as you can about the project. Go to the original casting website where you found the audition and read the project description. 
the role descriptions for all roles, not just yours, and find out as much as you can about the production. A pro tip is to search for the project on other casting websites that service your area and check if it's listed there. Descriptions, list of roles, and other details about the project can sometimes be different on different websites. When the casting director or the director themselves is listed on the call, look them up on the internet and find out what other projects that they've done. IMDB is your friend here. By looking up these people online, you might be able to get a sense for the style of projects that they do and the actors that were in their previous films. If you're lucky, you might even find trailers of their previous work. Now pay attention to the style and to the actor's performance. Is there anything that you can learn there that you can borrow for your audition? This is particularly important as you start auditioning for parts and projects with more experienced staff and bigger budgets. In smaller projects, it will be harder to find info about the production staff, but who knows? It's worth a shot. Now, the reason that I do this is that directors often take part in the audition, and there have definitely been times where I've had a conversation about their past projects, and that stuff comes up. And in those moments, I can leverage some of that info that I found in my research. Hey, congratulations on film XYZ. I watched the trailer and it was great. It shows the director that you're a pro and that you did your homework. Any advantage that you can get, my friends. Next, read the entire script if it's available to you. This applies to both first and callback auditions. When auditioning for established works like Shakespeare's Hamlet or performing a part of a scene of a Hollywood movie, then go online and find the entire script for the play or the film and read it. Doing so will inform your preparation and your performance and perhaps bring out a backstory that you weren't aware of. For established works, you can often find a synopsis, also called a summary, of the play, for example, online. For theater, I've even sometimes read editorial reviews of particular performances of the play. These reviews often talk about the general feel of the play and the characters, and it can help guide you to prepare yourself for the character and your performance. Now, all of this research can also be helpful at the audition when the director wants to talk to you about the parts of the script that aren't in the audition. And it would be a shame if you didn't read about it, right? Do your work. On a related note, if the project you're auditioning for is part of a series, then make sure that you watch at least parts of the previous episodes so that you can get a sense for the tone and the style of the acting and production. Next, preparing your performance for a callback. Now this one is simple. Continue doing what you did to get there. They brought you back because your look, your type, and your performance worked for the character and for the tone of the show. Leveraging any new info that you discovered in your research, you can and you should tweak your performance, but it should remain largely the same as the original. Note, however, that if the casting director gave you specific instructions during your pre-callback communication, then forget what I just said and follow those instructions. Now that might happen, for example, if they liked your look and your vibe, but they wanted a gritty performance instead of a lighter one. Next, and on a related note, you should also wear the same outfit, makeup, and do your hair the same way as last time. When you walk in the door or you log into an online audition, they're expecting to see the same person that they saw the first time. Again, throw out anything I just said if you were instructed to wear something or to look different. Pro tip, if you're going out on a lot of auditions, I find that it's helpful to keep some notes about each one of them what I wore, the decisions that I made about the performance that I gave, the names of the people that I met, and because it can be sometimes hard to remember these details, so I write them down and I keep a notepad on my phone. The last pre-audition step that I recommend to do is some improvisation and self-exploration of the scene that you're auditioning for. This is a key step that frankly, I need to do more regularly because in nearly all of my callbacks after running through the scene the first time, I've been asked to either go off script and improvise the scene or play the scene again with the same words but with a different approach. So for example, pr playing as though I'm joyful instead of the sorrowful that I prepared. Better actors than I can probably flip a switch on the spot and do that, but for the moment I can't, so I do some improv as my pre-audition prep. 
The approach that I take is like most improv. I follow the guideposts of the original scene, I diverge and explore, and then I land the scene at the final post. I try to explore not only different words, but different frames of mind, different tones of voice, and anything else that comes to me. During improvisation like this, it seems to free me up and to keep me acting more flexibly in the audition. And with that, we have completed the first part of this two-part series. In part two, we'll pick up where we left off and go through 10 more steps, starting from audition day and including what to expect during the audition, some curveballs that you can prepare for, and some post-audition tips. That is it for another episode of The Starting Actor, and I am Vinny Horst. If you found this info useful, then please like this video and subscribe to the channel. If you have friends that are actors, I would appreciate if you would let them know about the channel and to spread the love. Finally, if you have any questions about this or any other topics, then leave me a note on any video in this channel or DM me on Instagram, at Vince Horst. Catch you later.